Hi guys. It is a warm and smoky night in the Finger Lakes of New York. What are we, 3,000 miles from Oregon? Uh, here in New York, baby. We're on the night. It is now, what is it? Is it Monday night, July 19th, 2021? where the skies of upstate New York choked with smoke from the Oregon wildfires. And I was going to do today's Chronicle of the Collapse about the wildfires, but good Lord, guys, I think uh, that subject has been covered. So, uh, pawing through the mainstream media, I thought I had finally found my Chronicle of the Collapse today from Can America, this is from The Week, The Week, from Joel Mathis, a contributing writer to The Week, with his essay, Can America Save Itself? The Outlook is Grim. Can America Save Itself? The Outlook is Grim. And I need to uh, be real careful. The opening sentence, is the pandemic akin to climate change? Yes, is the corona panic akin to climate change? You know, basically comparing the level of threat against America and humanity from Corona panic as being no different than the threat of climate change. They are two peas out of the same pod and anybody who has not, I don't know, gotten a vaccine is, is the same as a climate change denier. Yes, and now 16 months later, the comparison, you know, between the threat to America and humanity from corona panic and climate change seems more apt and depressing than ever. Uh, but we're going to skip down to the bottom of this before I get my channel ripped down. Uh, Well, I lost it. They keep talking about alarming and everything else. Uh, yes. Uh, anyway, with both corona panic and climate, the seriousness of what is happening is undeniable. Yet, the denial continues anyway. The results in both cases are likely to be dreadful. But anyway, we are going to move ahead because, as I say, that is a dicey subject. So we're going to go from dicey to spicy. This is from The Insider. If there is anybody who does not understand why this chronicle of the collapse is every bit as big a threat to America and the planet as the Oregon wildfires, corona panic, and perhaps climate change combined, obviously I have been having a failure to communicate. Uh, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to read this article verbatim, word for word, I am going to try not to break in here because there is nothing I can add to this chronicle of the collapse from the insider from Yahoo News, one of the top, I don't know, 100 stories on the planet today. Take it away. This is by a young lady named Rachel Eskenazi. Rachel Askenasi has this to report. 
I compare the spicy chicken sandwiches from four fast food chains and the best was the crunchiest. There you go. First we have, you, you know, for the ADD people, we have the most important bullets, the takeaways from this article. I compared and ranked spicy fried chicken sandwiches from Burger King, McDonald's, Wendy's, and Shake Shack. I thought McDonald's and Shake Shack did not do as good of a job when it came to incorporating the spicy flavor. Burger King's spicy chicken came in first place when looking at the sandwich as a whole. Okay, those are the takeaways, but now we're going to dig deeper into this chronicle of the collapse. This is right next to sprawling Oregon blaze expands, forcing firefighters and residents into retreat. It is next to Oregon bootleg fire evacuations as largest U.S. fire burns 300,000 uh, acres. This is the fire sending the smoke into Ithaca and the article hot gusty winds fanning flames of massive U.S. wildfires. Okay, now we're going to get back to the insider. McDonald's spicy crispy chicken sandwich landed in the bottom slot because the chain failed to fully incorporate the spices into the chicken. Now, uh, uh, gosh, oh no, uh, my computer has already eaten my chicken sandwich. Sorry, okay. Yes, the coating on McDonald's spicy crispy chicken was dark brown and looked like it would provide a crisp bite with more chicken than breading. After biting into it, I found all this to be true. The fried outside was not as attention-seeking as the one on Burger King's Chicking or even Shake Shack's Hot Honey, but it still got the job of satisfying a craving for fried food done. While the texture of the filet was nice, that of the bun was not. It, meaning the bun, was dense and a little damp from the steam that gathered inside the package. The classic McDonald's hamburger bun would have been a better choice, in my opinion, and two inches from that we have from Detroit to Germany to Mumbai, climate change is worsening torrential downpours. I had the uh, road crew chief for my town out here today walking around my property offering advice uh, for to keep my house from flooding. So he has said in the 31 years he has been here that this house has flooded seven to eight times. The other neighbors seem to be four times. So this line right here about between four and five feet, this line right here is how deep this house was underwater uh, from a torrential downpour two years ago. We narrowly escaped uh, pretty much getting this house washed away and several people dying uh, three times in the past week. Uh, but anyway, we are not here to talk about climate change is worsening torrential downpours we need to get back to uh, this story. Okay. The overall 
flavor profile, I think there's, he's talking about McDonald's still, the overall flavor profile was also disappointing. I first got a bit of the sweetness and acidity that came from the bun and pickles, respectively, and a tiny bit of sweetness came from the sauce as well. But the heat from the red pepper sauce quickly took over and coated my whole mouth and throat. The sauce was too overwhelming and there was nothing to balance it out. Okay, uh, Goldilocks. A larger, thicker pickle slice could have helped to balance the profile here, but the ones, I mean the, meaning the pickles, McDonald's chose to use were small, thin, and barely delivered any flavor. The chain, meaning McDonald's, also chose to unevenly schmear, spelled S-C-H-M-E-A-R, <clears throat> to unevenly schmear sauce on the bottom and top buns rather than use it to coat the chicken filet. This strategy, you know, by some 16-year-old uh, minimum wage slave, uh, you know, living in, in some fucking hell. Oh, excuse me. I, I, I'm for, uh, it, it, anyway, guys, I need to get back to the story. <clears throat> this strategy left some pieces of chicken uncovered by sauce and therefore no different from McDonald's non-spicy version of the sandwich. Simply put, McDonald's sandwich was not well-rounded. Similarly, Shake Shack's hot honey chicken sandwich had heat coming exclusively from the sauce, which was just one factor in determining its third place position. <clears throat> Shake Shack is offering a hot honey fried chicken sandwich as part of a larger summer menu, which launched nationwide on July 1st and will last until October 4th. <clears throat> this sandwich promised, this lying sack of shit sandwich promised a honey glazed fried piece of chicken topped with a habanero mayo sauce made with pickled fresh habanero peppers. While the sauce was both sweet and packing tons of flavor, flavor, blah, 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 flavorful heat, I was not able to detect any honey flavor from the glaze. It was all hot, no honey. Uh, I know just how you feel, girl. All hot, no honey. Uh, how many times have we been there, guys? It's all hot, no honey. I know exactly your disappointment. I'm feeling that disappointment in my life myself tonight on this hot, sticky night. All hot, no honey. The fried coating itself had some savory flavors, but none resembling spice or honey. Equally as disappointing was the fact that the white meat was dry and flavorless, though it is important to note that this may have been a mistake unique to the batch I was served from. The fillets on the rest of the sandwiches in this ranking were moist and had flavors of their own. <clears throat> Though there is hardly any honey flavor, the sauce was powerful and the texture of fried coating was pleasantly crunchy. 
Unlike McDonald's sauce, this one was not so overpowering. It did become the main flavor throughout the dish, but not in a negative way. I was able to taste the unique sweetness that comes from a pickled hot pepper, and there was just enough of it to where it nearly coated the top of the bun, but was not overflowing. And even though the coating did not taste like honey, how many times have we heard the coating, the hot honey does not taste like honey? And even though the coating did not taste like honey, it was nonetheless rippling with modestly crunchy textures that did not hurt to bite down on. The shredded lettuce was crunchy, and the potato bun was as soft as I always expect it to be. Had this sandwich been labeled as just a spicy fried chicken sandwich, it may have landed higher on my ranking, but the lack of one of two main, two main components, take a wild guess what she's talking about, I'm not going to say it again, coupled with the dry piece of poultry, landed this behind Wendy's and Burger King's versions. She's building up, you know, building up to the, the big climax here. Wendy's sandwich took second place because of its intentional spice. Wendy's breading, Wendy's breading was also on the thinner side and provided a somewhat crispy bite, though not as crispy as McDonald's. But what made this one better was the seasoning of the fried filet. Unlike McDonald's sandwich, the flavor, you know, on the Wendy sandwich came from a peppery dredge. The flavor came from a peppery dredge rather than a gloopy, G-L-O-O-P-Y sauce. It tasted like I was eating a spicy chicken tender on a bun, which is great! The bun Wendy's used was lightweight and slightly sweet, which allowed the chicken to shine and be the main event. The lettuce and tomato did not add much here by way of flavor, but they also did not detract from the sandwich at all. While the fried chicken filet was tasty and satisfying, the topping did not really make it better. The lettuce and tomato were both thin and added more texture than flavor. There was also a mayo sauce between the tomato and the top bun. While I thought this was good for texture and functionality, it cooled down the spice of the chicken a bit. It did not impart additional flavor the way Burger King's honey mustard-like mayo did. Overall, this was a solid sandwich. Now, we get to the big climax. Burger King's winning take on the fast food phenomenon was flavorful, thoughtful, and larger than expected. Like Wendy's, this sandwich came on a fluffy, chewy, and semi-sweet bun. It had a rippled, fried dredge that both looked and tasted luxurious and super crunchy. The tang 
that came from the sauce complemented the rest of the flavor profile, which included pickle chips and a second sauce, a second sauce that tasted like a cross between mayo and honey mustard. Each component of the sandwich came together in a cohesive and delicious way. The pickle chips Burger King used were large enough to cover most of the surface area of the bun, which meant I got some briny goodness in every bite. Since the filet was, gla was glazed in sauce rather than topped with it, I tasted even flavoring and heat throughout each bite. <clears throat> the glaze had notes of chili peppers, but it did not overwhelm my taste buds and fill my whole mouth, but I did think it could have used a bit more salt to highlight the fruitiness of the chilies. I also appreciated the fact that I was able to still recognize the flavors that came from the meat itself. Taking size, flavor profile, and purpose served by each component in the sandwich into consideration, I think Burger King had the winning spicy chicken sandwich. And then uh, they have an ad for Wendy's. Huh. The next story, uh, which is titled, How to Get One Dollar Nuggets, Burgers, and Chicken Nuggets at Wendy's Right Now. And this is a news story with an ad for Wendy's. Uh, then, of course, you know, Yahoo News has disabled comments about a year ago. And this is, so they're still uh, at, the, at the bottom of the story. Our goal is to create a safe and engaging place for users to connect over interest and passions in order to improve our community experience. In order to improve our community experience, we are temporarily suspending article commenting and that was, I think it's been at least a year that uh, Yahoo News. All right, then the third story is this cheesy Frida Cubana makes us want to put crispy fries on all our burgers. Oh, this is this latest thing, have you seen, where they actually have started now. This is pretty common where they're actually putting your order of fries as part of your burger. They make a, a, a burger and they take the French fries and they put it between the meat and the bun. So when you bite into the burger, you're, you're eating your, your burger and your fries at the same time. Uh, if you guys are, I'm sure you guys uh, are familiar with what I'm talking about. But anyway, I see uh, I have an ad for screen houses at Home Depot, but that's another story for another day and maybe another channel. So anyway, <clears throat> anybody who does not know why that story was voted today's Chronicle of the Collapse. Obviously, we have had a <clears throat> failure to communicate, and I got to wrap this up because I need to go make a 
a peach pie for breakfast. We just had peach cobbler for dinner. We ate the entire cobbler in one sitting and now we're, I have to make a peach icebox pie put in the refrigerator to set up so we can get up tomorrow and have peach pie for breakfast. I highly advise you to have peach cobbler for dinner and peach pie for breakfast while you still can. Yes, dog, are you washing my face with your tail? Bye, guys.